Okay, so we are in, what did I call this? Literary <laughs> costuming, the devil's in the details. My name is Pinky Shear, and I'm a historical and theatrical costumer. And this is... I'm Linda Tellieri. I have a blog called the 13th Depository Blog Spot, yes. which has quite a long article in it on costuming. Um, well, cost, the costumes of the series. I so a bit, but I do a lot of embroidery. So mm -hmm. uh, basically, I became more interested in how the embroidery was depicted in the series, and decided to do some have a go myself. And I've actually bought a couple of exact some examples to have a look at some stage afterwards. So, yeah. Um, I want to first start out by saying that. I'm listening to the books on <laughs> MP3, but I have never read the books, so I want you all to know that Linda is here to help me if y'all have questions with details. My job is primarily um, uh, structural and how to turn what literary descriptions you find in books and, and in literature and how to bring them to life and make them uh, A, your own, but also B, fit a character that you that you see in the in the um, or that you visualize as you're reading. So um, what I have brought here today is some examples. And honestly, um, for the past four months, I've been living on Linda's blog. Yes. And thank I you. still haven't even gotten to costume section two. Oh. Um, um, <laughs> but that's because I, I've been nitpicking your blog. And not necessarily nitpicking, but I've been going pouring through the details so that I can properly, um, and then researching the characters and researching the colors and the regions and all of these things and um, so that I can properly bring to you all um, what what in theatrical world would be a, a Jordan Kahn vision or a Robert Jordan real time vision um, or at least through my eyes anyway um, clearly we have Perrin over here it's not a strange way uh, you know the basic men's outfit. You know, I find that the men actually had a lot of variety in their costumes, um, just depending on the regions where you were in the classes of the, the, the gentlemen, which was really great. So I have a couple of different um, um, versions of the costumes for them. And the one on the end that's hanging up there, which belongs to my husband, who's a slacker right now and not here in his costume, um, that's his Matt costume. Um, so basically, you know, what we can talk about today is um, any questions that you have on how, to, how te technical questions, details, things of that nature. Um, also, you know, we're kind of here to discuss how not to put a Renfest outfit on in a shawl and say, I'm so-and-so from real time, um, because Mr. Jordan went through extensive measures to be detailed and it ranges from 15th to early 19th century and from regions all over the world. Um, so I'm here because, you know, if anybody wants help in trying to, to create that vision that you have from what you see in the book. Um, <coughs> Grace is wearing the Alana. Now this was uh, described as a writing, a gray writing dress in the book. Um, and this is an example of the slitted skirt, which shows the underskirt underneath. Um, and it does have, it has the slits in it, but then it closes back up again at the bottom so that you can kind of see through just a little bit at what's under there. Um, this one is a less pronounced version of that. <coughs> and um, her character is from a region that really is celebratory of a lot of what I saw as Native American with the belts and the um, very um, shapes of um, diamonds, triangles, that kind of thing. I um, can't remember what the word is right now. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um, <laughs> I'm on half a cup of coffee. Oh, okay. You're half a cup up for me right now. Uh, but, um, this, this was a, a vision that we put together, you know, as far as material goes, um, it's not technically canon material, it's not the wool that's, you know, described in the books or anything of that nature. Um, 
it is what we had access to and it is what she preferred. And, you know, as a, an individual costume, it needs to represent a little bit of you as well as the character you're portraying. And that is her alarm dress. <coughs> I think we spent, we spent two weeks on this one and we um, embroidered in um, actually like applique in on the inside under the, the gray dime um, under the gray diamonds we cut some out so that the green would show through and make it complete with the bottom of the dress. Um, so you know I'm not quite sure where else to go from here. Yes me. I, I have a technical question because yes. the gray material I have some gold material that I've been working on that looks very much like that. Mm -hmm. And it is so fine that I used the finest needle I could find. Yes. And I still ended up having to hem the thing by hand. Yes, that's Be actually... Because I could not, <coughs> I could barely sew on it. And I had planned on machine embroidering around the edge. Right. It that's was an impossibility. <coughs> and now I'm planning on doing trim. Well, the way you can do the machine embroidery on the edge. Now, we did a, a machine stitch um, basically because I was sick for two weeks and I'm still trying to. I'm not bringing concrete in. I'm just <laughs> saying I'm not bringing in concrete. It's exactly the material. Yes, it is. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and we struggled with this because the material is so fine. Um, and the thing is, is that it's going to roll when you do a machine. Uh, but we were kind of in a hurry and I was, like I said, I was sick for a while. So we kind of had to get it all together at once. Um, but I, in order to do an embroider on the edge from a machine, uh, what you want to do is use a stabilizer. Um, you want to use a, a stabilizer or a strip of some kind of stabilizer at the bottom of the hem. And that will keep it. A quick fix to that, if you don't actually have stabilizer on hand, coffee filters actually yes. work really They're well. They're amazing. Hmm. Coffee yeah. filters so are like you switch to French press yeah. coffee. Coffee I filters have coffee work filters. really well. Yes. But I'm not using it. I worked for Husqvarna for three years. <laughs> yeah. So I know all the tricks on the machine embroidery. Hand embroidery, not so much. Um, but but it, it works just as good for hand embroidery, too. But that's her yeah, area. Um, area. And that's what we do. The other way is to have a <laughs> matching <laughs> line, like a matching uh, oh, um, that was the fabric, really and say um, a, a good quality polyester lining, which is still very thin. Mm -hmm. You can do that, too. Mm -hmm. That's the other way. Good. But honestly, most would go to the um, it just gives it a little bit more weight so that it won't roll, um, which is basically what happened to this hem. I mean, <coughs> it's one of those things where we would have hand stitched it, but um, it's the hand stitching it. It, it still it's works. Not flat. It no, looks it's not flat. rounded. If if yeah. the, if you have a curve in the material, oh yeah, you, it, you're going to have a curve and it, it, it'll roll. It's a train. Unless it's cut on a bias. If it's cut at a diagonal, it's not going to work. But when it's when it's cut straight, as most patterns are, um, it will roll. <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, any other questions or thoughts? Is it full underdress or is it just the no? It's sneaky. Okay. We oh, um, yes. the peaks of green under the actual overdress. That's why I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, we hand stitched those on. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell if it was under or over. It's underneath. Um, and the really great way to do that is right now, um, because there's so many things that require embroidery, unless you have Linda in your pocket to do that for you or it's something that you absolutely love to do, drapery materials, they, they might not be canon materials that are found in, in the books, but um, if you're going for the look, there are many gorgeous drapery materials. I mean, this is polyester. It feels like silk. It's gorgeous. And I can wash it in the washing machine. Um, and when you have costumes that you know you wear often, or if, you're, if, if you go to a lot of cons like John here, um, he's at every con on the face of the earth. This is not his regular costume. It's the time he's seen Punk Boba Fett. And let me tell you, the availability to throw this outfit in the washing machine is fabulous. So um, this is, you know, this is a polyester thing, and unless you've got some heavy beading or really fine embroidery work on there, you know, you can toss that kind of stuff in the wash. 
and, and be good with it, and it still looks really nice. Plus, it gives the same effect. I, when I was picking out materials and reading reading the descriptions of the costumes that I wanted to do, um, you know, these things just kind of popped in mind. I was like, oh, that's so little time. Oh my gosh, that's you know completely perfect for what I'm doing. Um, drapery materials are great. They also come wider, so you don't need as much. Um, you can get it in between um, 60, and if you're looking at a shear, sometimes 105 inches a yard. Or, or width-wise, um, um, which enables you to save money. And also, um, they're a lot more heavy-duty. They, they stand up. They're thicker. Um, <clears throat> as far as theatrical costuming goes, um, for people who wear them often, um, or regularly, like John here, um, I prefer to use uh, upholstery-type materials because they get a lot of wear and tear and they will last much, much longer um, if you use uh, a drapery or an upholstery material. They also have better prints. <laughs> they look more, they look more period. What is this? That is a piece of couch upholstery. <laughs> <laughs> you are currently wearing my mother's couch. <laughs> you can say, oh, where'd John go? And I'm like, oh, it's Kim. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> that depends on who you know and what kind of coupons you got. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I can say that because because of the financial situation and the country right now, Joanne's is desperate, and they always have their drapery and upholstery materials either 40 to 50 percent off. And if they don't, you can always cut that coupon out of the mailer. Um, <clears throat> Also, there is a location called Fabric World over by Stone Mountain. Um, that is Fabric World. And all of their upholstery material, no matter what it is or how wide it is, $5 a yard. <laughs> okay, so she's wearing, <clears throat> she's wearing, let me see. I'm going to do a little math. No, wait, maybe I'm not going to do a little math. I'm going to estimate her costume costs about 50 bucks to make. Holy oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I was raised in public school. She's got, she's got four yards of the green underskirt, the Pierdot underskirt, two yards of the dark gray, and then I think we had about three, three yards of the light gray. Now, the reason that it's so cost effective is because I spent only a little bit of money on the really fancy stuff, and then I accentuated it with the lesser expensive, the light silver, was not as much. It's, it's cheaper. Um, so I made that. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So I, <laughs> so I utilized that. And what you do when you, when you pair a really elaborate fabric with something that is not quite so elaborate, it actually brings it out more. It accentuates it more. Um, <clears throat> it makes it pop a lot more. And that's one reason why I like to combine instead of doing one outfit out of Penny, come here. Can you stand up and I show the dress? Um, <coughs> she's wearing a Victorian gown, Sam's bustle. Okay, don't bustle on this dress. Um, it's a great dress. It's really, really pretty. But had I put a solid color in there, I, I think in either like a teal or a purple or something, it really would have accentuated the pattern of the cherubs, you can't even see the cherubs in it because it, there's so much pattern. Um, now that you mentioned it, I can see them. Yes, yeah. once I mention it, you can see them. <laughs> but when first you, it looks camouflaged. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But when you put something that's a solid collar with that, um, and always, you know, your solids are going to be less expensive. Um, so don't be afraid to mix materials at all. You may go sit down. Thank you, dear. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> You know, with this one we have a poultry material. I think this silver stuff is kind of a lining, a rayon blend. And then um, the the gray, the gray with the circles is a drapery material. And then we have a sheer. Um, <clears throat> mixing textures is a really good idea, especially for costuming. Yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. What did you do to solve that? Um, <clears throat> very carefully. <laughs> uh, basically, what I did was um, I took a, a width of the bottom uh -huh. and I made it um, an interfacing, if you will, of the bottom. So it was about six inches wide. And then I, I had a scallop pattern. I actually sewed the pattern around the edge and then I cut it out. So I do a lot of cut out work. That's the same thing that we did with Grace's dress. We sewed it in and then cut out the extra from the inside of the bullet journal. <clears throat> but, um, you know, as far as that goes, uh, there's really great ways to get the, the look that you want. Um, my husband was really devastated because, um, well, we, this was the image that he was doing, which is the is the ebook, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have Sam Weber next year as our art guest of honor. Spoilers! <laughs> um, this was the image that my husband wanted to portray. Who is currently not here? Sam. <laughs> um, yes. Um, but the lining, the lining of this coat has a raven in it. Um, however, honestly, if you look at this and you look at what we made over there, the upholstery material, it's a brocade, it's black on black, and you can't tell that it's not exactly what's, you know, or very close to or similar to what's on this piece of paper. Um, yeah, and so it's just a matter of finding the right pieces. And I think I used, that material was, probably about $14 a yard on the sale, and I only use three yards of it. It's very, very expensive, though. Regular $35 a yard, but I'm only using three yards, so um, again, that's being cost-effective in your costuming is using a little bit of the good stuff and, you know, go with the regular or what you can get on sale that matches. <coughs> Anything? Anybody else? Any questions? How long should it make to take? A, how long should it take to make a Costco? How lazy are you? Comes <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I mean, how long does it take you, and how long should an how amateur? How long does it take me? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then how long should an amateur? No okay, <laughs> that's an unfair question. <laughs> um, well, I have to think about that for a minute because about as far as me, um, because. I was working on four projects at once, um, and I haven't slept in three days. <laughs> I took a couple of naps, and then I had um, some sweatshop labor helping as well. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I had my my four year old pull those ruffles. <laughs> um, you know, so. Um, but as far as if I were to put in hours on that, and if I were to estimate the amount of hours that I put on that, the longest part is cutting. Yes. And it's my least favorite. I hate cutting. Cutting is the worst. It takes longer to cut than it does for me to put it together. Um, I think we put the bodice or the base of the dress, the actual gray silver part together in about... 20? The whole thing, 20. Yeah, uh, it didn't take long to put it together um, as far as the top went. I, I probably spent about two hours total on the over dress uh, as far as sewing the seams. Um, the, the extended amount of time comes in where the handwork is. Um, if you're going to buy a pattern and then materials and then you cut it, you can estimate at least depending upon what kind of pattern you get, um, a Regency era dress like this would be about two hours of cutting time. A Marie Antoinette style would be about eight hours of cutting time and 22 and a half yards of fabric for that. Um, I don't think anybody can afford to make those anymore. Um, and that's without embroidery and I had a lot of it. Yeah, that's, that's not including embroidery. Um, those are incredibly detailed. Uh, but. Um, so it really depends on what you're doing and the size of the project. Um, I cannot help but admire your patchwork cape. And I'm thinking that you probably spent a number of hours on this piece. Oh, yeah. Um, that looks like at least 
three or four days of work. The base cloak took about, you know, three hours. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. And then I carried around a bag of rags, rags. and a cloak with me everywhere I went mm -hmm. for about three weeks. Yeah. Uh, solid and everywhere I would sit and talk to people and I'd be sewing and you know I'd be watching movies and I'd be sewing <laughs> and so you know it uh, it's a long period of low intensity work <laughs> right but it's good to have something that's why I do what I do so that I have something to do with my hands while I'm watching TV because I have obsessive compulsive disorder and it keeps my family happy <laughs> so I won't vacuum my house four times a day Yes, I do a lot of beadwork. This is minor, this is just starting. I haven't even begun to beat this piece. Um, this, this piece is going to be, like when you look at it, it's gonna look 3D. I have some other beaded pieces, but that's for the corset panel later, and I'm using it as a bride to get you to come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, but I would say, to answer your question, for a novice, if you're doing I would say a novice who's doing a Regency style dress, if you put about four hours into it a day, you could probably have one done in about three days as a novice, about 12 hours. Um, I've been sewing for, how old am I? Okay, I've been sewing for over 20 years. Um, I started when I was one. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I started when I was, I started hand sewing when I was seven, and I um, started sewing on a machine when I was ten. That was when my mom let me start using the machine. Um, and I was not ever trained technically um, in a college for fashion or costume or any of this. The only thing I have education in is history. I have my master's in history. Um, which I was then later able to use as a historical costumer and theatrical costumer. Um, but uh, as a teacher, I kind of sucked at it. So, um, um, I, I would probably say it would probably take me about six hours to do a Regency style dress, and that's from cut to finish. Like I said, unfair question. <laughs> it's it's like, yeah. how long it took me to do mine? <laughs> it's, it's um, well, you know, and that's the thing is, if it's something that you do every day, it's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even have to look at the pattern instructions anymore to do it. But I don't know how to make patterns either. Um, I've, I've never learned. That's something you learn in fashion and design school, and I never learned how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I just basically find the patterns that are closest to what I want, and I've actually. Frankenstein six different patterns together to get what I, what I want out of it. Well, I bought the pattern that I bought for this, I altered three different things. On. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, a lot, and that's one thing that is something that is, as a costumer or someone who's interested in doing a lot of costuming, I highly recommend either getting a body form to your size or making one. There are YouTube videos where it shows you how to make one out of duct tape. Um, and it's basically using a shirt, um, stuffing it, and, and you know, making duct tape and sticking it on a stand, and, and um, so that it's actually to your body measurements because that's really the only way you can alter patterns. Um, they don't make patterns to fit real people. They make patterns to fit dolls, just like they make regular clothes to fit dolls. You can't find anything off a rack that fits anybody anymore. Even someone like me, I can't find anything. I have no boobs. There's you know, I have sagging here, you know, I have to fill it all in or, or whatever. Um, and I, I've done so many alterations for people. They're just like, I can't buy anything off the rack, too short, too small, six inch waist, you know, depth and yeah, the waist is in the wrong place. Right. I have short arms. I always have to. And God forbid you be a woman and have hips. <laughs> or a bus, or a yeah. bus. Or you know, and you buy a pair of jeans, and they fit over your hips, but then they're sagging at the waist because you have curves. You know, whatever. So they want you to hang on a hanger. Yeah, yeah. and look pretty. Oh yeah, absolutely. Or you know, they're all made for fifteen-year-olds. Where's Maya? <laughs> she just left. <laughs> so um, that's you know, kind of the issue right now that we struggle with is as far as pattern goes. The good thing is that um, the pattern companies now are making so many historical patterns that you don't have to go online, you know, and find 
hunt down that historical pattern. You can get a historical pattern from Simplicity or Butterick at your Joann's or your, you know, Hancock Fabrics now. Um, there are a couple of patterns I don't recommend. I, I don't recommend certain Simplicity corset patterns because no one should have to sew together 27 pieces of fabric to cover one yard of your bust. <laughs> um, as, as a costume, I want this too. Oh, this is the dress Heather made for me a couple years ago. Yeah. Oh, it changes. Put it on. Oh, she's putting it on. Put it on tonight. Put it on tonight. Save it for later. I'm working right now. Oh, I brought more. I brought more. Um, you know, I was sitting there thinking, uh -huh. I bet I need to bring some more lacing. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, the other lace is upstairs in the suitcase. I just didn't want to get it out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, ma'am. So, so I made the dress and it's very plain. Mm -hmm. And already I have. Okay, I'm that. Right. Do I take it apart or do I say, okay, this was a learning experience of a big No. Uh, do you feel like you um, messed it up in some way or do you feel like to you it's too plain? At this point, I'm thinking it's too plain. Okay. Can I borrow your um, some of your information from your blog here? <laughs> I have my laptop. Let's just work work. Work. they all know where yeah. I am. While she's looking for it, can I say that this? Yeah. It's done after. Can be done afterwards. Mm -hmm. You can add it on. Um, lots of things you can applique uh, and hand embroider and mix together. April is brilliant at that, can I say? But lots of ladies are very skilled at that. I see stuff in here. Did you add stuff to the on your blog? Are you sure? I must have missed something. I've been on that blog for a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean tomorrow morning I'll be sh I'll be actually discussing how to my add um, this sort of which is couch. I'm, I'm going to be your girlfriend. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, if you can be there, then yeah, that, that might help you get some ideas. And you don't you can couch other threads. You can couch braid. There's a million things you can do to brighten it up to your taste. Yes, braid is great. It's very quick, painless, and looks good. It's not expensive. Painless, but <laughs> comparatively painless. Go. And yeah, there's a lot to do. Yeah, this is um, actually a gold thread, and I've also got a small amount of gold coil here, which um, is what I'll be teaching people how to do. Be there tomorrow for that. Yeah, so, um, I want to so, yeah. They're almost like you can be. They can be treated like beads, as these ones where all of you can do other things. But yeah, we'll talk about that. They are in a pretty good one. Um. Further, yeah. that, that she has that really lovely uh, period picture. Right, that's the one I was looking at. I, 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 I agonize over them. Yeah. I, can, I can supply you with as much fashion, historical fashion and, um, and images as you could possibly stand. Um, I'm looking for copyright free ones, which is the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I wonder you said you've never seen them before. Yeah, well, I, 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 I have gone through section two yeah. just it's briefly. Right towards the bottom. They yeah, actually are. are. Okay, um, this beautiful costume here, which is a Regency era mm -hmm. in pure waist, mm -hmm. um, with, and actually it is described as having embroidered belting around the bust. Um, if you do not have the ability to or um, to do the embroidery yourself and like I said you do not have Linda in your pocket to help you out. Um, there are again many ways to utilize the materials that you can find in, um, yes. in the fabric stores. Um, I actually, I'm glad you brought this to me because this is one very good example. They make now embroidered ribbon or a tapestry ribbon. Which also, I was, when I mentioned braid, that, that is also like to me a type um, of braid. So as opposed to spending hours and hours and hours of trying to, to perform this and do this as a gold braid or a, some kind of embroidery, you can actually take a simple piece of um, 
a band of material again is so inexpensive and you can spend minimal money on these beautiful pieces of tapestry ribbon which you can find at your local joint. Hey, baby. <laughs> she's, she's my Joanne's girl. That's a, that's so, yeah. Um, she's, my, she's my shop savior. Um, um, People at Joanne's get me by now. Yes, well, so, so does she. Because <laughs> um, we live there. Um, and, then, and then, again, other ways to accentuate a regular piece of band of cloth. Gorgeous, gorgeous. These, these also have the gold thread in them, um, like what you've done. Um, and this is prefabricated, so honestly, it's not not as wonderful as, as your work. But it's uh, still, it gives you an authentic look. And some of these look very, very vintage and very classic. So you're getting the same kind of look. And I just found beads that match, and I tossed them on there. Um, but um, for the colors of the ajas. Um, but as far as like being able to do you know your your pieces and to accentuate something that you feel like is very plain, um, definitely check out those ribbon sections. You can also find pieces of material that have just the edges. Um, there's some gorgeous Indian materials like um, that you make saris with. That that's, what that's what right. That's what I see. Your, see it. Too. This is the I've, edge of the coat. Exactly, I've seen three, this a hundred times. And this is gorgeous material. Um, now this is found in the apparel section. And is it brocade? Is that right? It's brocade. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like Yeah, it is. That's fantastic. But yeah, all this is, I cut off the edge and made it into a deep cut. So that, that's part of what I did. Mm -hmm. what I, my question is, if I'm going to go back, do I now just simply rip the whole thing apart and start with a flat piece of material to add these things to it and then re-sew it? Or can you sew it like on sew something it right that's on already top. done? I just like to sew it right on top. If you have a small whip stitch, you can hide. So anything. Just, just be very careful to keep the tension on. Mm -hmm. I have costumes yeah. also that very careful you don't sew through multiple layers. Yes. No, no, I have costumes I made ten years ago, and I'm still working on embroidery on them. Whenever I have time, I just work on more embroidery. Yeah. 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 And, I've, and I made them ten years ago. Yeah, just sew it right on top. Because then, oftentimes, what happens is um, my least favorite thing to do, and something that I always had to do for theater, was. My director would bring me like a 1980s prom gown and say, turn this into a 1940s vintage glamour Hollywood. And, I, and my, my, I would rather make a 1940s vintage replica Hollywood gown from scratch than take the time and the seam ripper. Honestly, if I were my own show, my hands don't work very well. Um, you know, and that motion really hurts me. Um, the, the seam ripper, and, and I just want to string like, oh, I'm just trying to make it easier for you. And I said, no, you're making it cheap for you, so you don't have to go buy material. You know, you go to Goodwill, get you an 80s prom gown, great. And then I have to dye it. I have to take the whole thing apart, and then dye it while it's all apart in pieces, and then uh, and then deal with all these threads and unraveling, and it's a nightmare. Um, if you can avoid taking something apart, because a lot of times, if you go through that motion of taking apart, you're not going to want to put it back together. I'm, honestly, I have pieces that I thought, I need to take this apart and I need to insert something here or there. And they're sitting, I have a big laundry basket in my studio of pieces that have to be fixed or updated in some way, shape, or form because I took them apart from them and put them back together again. A lot of times it's just you lose motivation after a while. Um, you know, unless it's something you really, really love and really want to do. After you've put it all together, it's almost heartbreaking to take something apart again. What? Yeah. Mm. And the piece will distort. Mm? You take it apart and because you see ripped it out, you've distorted what you yeah. have. Right. And it, it depends on the fabric. Some fabric really shows holes. Satin is the devil. His yeah. is made right. out of sprays. Right. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. This, yeah. I would never try to take this part. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. that's what I used for lining. Because mm -hmm. I had it, I had it from an old customer. I, knew it had, I didn't want to buy more material, so I used it for lining. And I it. 
Um, yeah, and actually the frame material, the frame thing is, is the big issue that I have too. A lot of some, some of the upholstery materials I did one Victorian gown where um, just standing there, even though I, I went through the trouble of edging it and putting seam binding on it and it's still the seam frayed wide open. Um, you, you really want to check on some of these lesser expensive places how tightly woven some of these upholstery materials are because if it's not tightly woven and it starts just, you know, when you touch it, it just goes to pieces. It might look really pretty on the roll, but it, you'd have to buy extra material and cut an inch outside of your cutting lines just to, to accommodate for unraveling in the process. And, you know, as far as embroidery or beading goes, I don't know what you use on the edges of yours while you're working on it. Um, this one I actually... Um, you did it afterwards, right? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I pieced... I'll stand up a bit so you can see. Mm -hmm. um, I have... Um, <coughs> I have iron-on interface. Right. Mm -hmm. So I pieced it all together, the interfacing the same. Like, I ironed the interfacing to the fabric, pieced it all together. Uh, the great thing about that is that this is a silk satin. It will fray like crazy. Mm -hmm. But because it was interfaced, <coughs> that's kept under control. Then I sewed through all that as it like and in this pieced form, and then I added the other scenes. So I was kind of ignoring a lot of the, what the right, pattern right, instructions right. were, yes. but I knew where I wanted to go, so I could get away with that. So that's how I did it. Um, I didn't put gold embroidery around the sleeves. I considered it, but because my arms are short, it would only tell everyone exactly how long my arms were. So I'm <laughs> sure my arms were. So I left it off, but um, most people would probably do the same, and perhaps again on the hem. But um, I had I was limited for time as well, so there's lots of considerations to make. Um, exactly how much embroidery you're going to have. The bigger you are, the more you can add on to yourself. If you're small like me, you have to. You know, it's better if you limit yourself. Otherwise, you end up looking like a mini Christmas tree or something. <laughs> yeah. Also, though, it no. also depends on the character you're portraying. Well, that's true, well. too. If yeah, you're exactly. portraying a flamboyant character, you know, you can have there is no and such thing. Presumably, you much. have the personality to be to carry it off no matter what size you are. Right. I'm not massively flamboyant, so it wasn't, you know, I just couldn't do it convincingly. But um, the other thing I did with this one, or didn't do, was it's zipped because I don't have a maid with me, so. <laughs> uh, because, uh, no, a lot of times to dress, you needed assistance. You needed a good friend who basically slept in the same room with you. My husband is awesome at lacing horses. Well, exactly, that's right. Yeah. My husband's really quite good. Get and my husband thinks I invited her because I love my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, so hence the zipper, because yes. I want to be independent, especially if I wear this in Reno mm -hmm. in August, I really won't have anybody with me. That can yeah. help me dress, so um, that's why I've put the zipper in. But as someone really sensibly pointed out to me, I could have put a row of buttons, non functional buttons, mm -hmm. on the back mm -hmm. to let everyone think that I did actually go to the trouble of doing the tiny little buttons. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And I will do that actually. Uh, well, you know, that's how my wedding dress was. Well, it was yes. a zipper, but it was under the buttons. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I've yeah. done wedding dresses like that and also historical costumes like that. I think the worst one was. Um, a wedding dress that I did out of an upholstery material similar to what he's wearing, only it was like a lavender kind of, it's really pretty, beautiful material, great wedding dress material, except for the fact that I had made 89 covered buttons with this material. It's really thick and I'm sitting there going, oh my hands, um, <laughs> hammering the covered buttons, the material, and it was so hard to get it, and it was fraying around, and I hate you, Gretchen. You know, I'm saying the lady that that had ordered the dress, and it's it's five dollars a button. You know, <laughs> um, because it was a nightmare to do those. But um, absolutely, that is a great way to hide a zip in the back. Um, also on Grace, uh, hers is a, a invisible zipper in the side. Um, that's the way they did it. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be, now he's seen it. Um, um, that's the way they did it back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, or actually 40s and 50s, not quite 30s, but uh, 40s and 50s was they would hide their zippers in the sides of their dresses. Um, um, and it, it was one way for them to utilize more material so they wouldn't have a seam down the center of the back. They can place their material on a fold. Um, and part of that was trying to salvage material during World War II salvaging efforts. Um, 
Any other questions? How did you the stuff in the frame and the sleeves that the shear? Okay. The shear is, is what I did is called a lingerie seam. Um, and a lingerie seam is when you take a piece, um, the only way I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, um, no, because I, I, I need to be able to show her, I think. Okay, what you do is you take a piece and you sew it right sides out first, right along the edge. Okay? Um, so you'll sew it um, the opposite of what you think. Instead of the right sides together, you're going to sew it wrong sides together first. And you're going to sew it as close to the edge as possible. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take it over to your handy dandy ironing board. You're going to press that seam flat and then you're going to turn it over. You're going to turn it over so that it's right sides together. Okay? What you're doing, and then you're going to go back and stitch just on the outside of where you stitched before. And what you're doing is you're encasing the raw edge. Is that like a French seam? It is it's called a French, French seam. seam. It's a lingerie seam or a French seam. I guess they, it's, we um, call it a French seam. It's French seam. Okay. Uh, it's, I did burlesque costuming, so they call it lingerie. Everything is lingerie. When you're looking at a material that frays, number one, that I like to do that on all my costuming because if something that I, I if if you do a, a really heavy weight costume like that coat down there, sometimes having it fully lined, if you're at a convention, say Dragon Con. Um, and you're wearing ultra suede and it's doubled up and you've got extra layers, you know, my mm -hmm. husband's going to die of a, of a heat stroke, you know. Um, Especially if you plan to wear anything in the parade. Right. Oh, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the, I, the first costume <laughs> that I used to wear in the Dragon Con parade was a big healthy velvet gown with um, a, like a, a crinoline under it. Mm -hmm. and, no. By doing a French seam, it enables you to finish the inside of your garment without having to add a liner. Um, and um, it looks neat. It looks finished. Um, honestly, I don't use a serger. Um, I hate them. They make my head hurt just thinking about threading, threading a serger. Yes, thank you, Meg. <laughs> just trying to thread a serger. Just, just, I'm so old school. I learned on my grandma's black yes. singer machine, the one with the paddle, and my mom took it and got a little engine put in. You know, it does two stitches. You know, <laughs> that's it. Um, and that's what I learned on. So getting a, sur a surgery was kind of scary, and, and I took it back the next day um, <laughs> because you know my grandma told me. She said, "Well, you know, you don't need a surgery if you can do a French thing or a lingerie thing." So that's what I learned to do. And if you can, and if you, I can draw a picture of it, of it, as, if you still need help no, for me describing. But it's. Um, <clears throat> You're kind of sewing the garment together twice, but then again, you'd be sewing the garment together twice anyway if you were going to line it. Yeah, that's true. Um, <coughs> there's lots of blue lining. Um, there's a lot of blue lining. Hmm? There's lots of blue lining because you have to make sure everything lines up. Yeah, right. it's a lot easier. You know, I, I wish you could do that with corsets, <laughs> but it's, it's impossible to do that. That's true. Do you want to come get your costume? Your, your question? No, um, do you remember which pattern you, your dress came from? Right. To be honest, no. But yeah, I mean, I did, it had de it was a typical fairy thing. I liked it because the bodice was right for me, and that's okay. why I bought it. So because this is a Taravana style gown, I can look that up. Actually, I, 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 if I can remember the brand, it may even be a brand new But I don't think it was. Uh, anyway, and it had these silly dangly sleeve things, and I thought if I'm going to wear this while I'm demonstrating gold Sorry. work. And I'm not going to have silly dangly sleeves because that just won't work. So that was one of the things it had. A, there was the option of having a hood, which you know, yeah, yeah. And, and it's got and it had like a, a bit of a full train. Yes, I know which one you're having. Know, yeah. yeah. So which I got rid of because okay. yeah. So yeah, that's what I mean. I I, I did some, a few alterations on it. I changed the back a bit because being quite narrow shouldered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There were a few things I did, but. Yeah, if you know like your body shape, um, you can do quite a bit. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to touch on as far as costuming goes, um, 
I am a real stickler. The devil is in the details. For me, it's hair. It's makeup if you have to wear it. It's jewelry pieces. It's weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> um, you know, the accessories really do make a difference. It's like you can take a plain dress and you can make it out of a phenomenal material and it'll be great, but unless you accessorize it appropriately, um, you know, necklaces, jewelry, beautiful hand beaded neck pieces, which that's the first thing I noticed was going, oh my God, that looked great in my kid's dress. You know? <laughs> um, you know, those are the things that really, really make a costume worthwhile. I work with um, a photographer who specializes in costume photography, um, Damp Horizon Studios. Um, they're really popular at Dragon Con, and um, we're hoping that they'll be here next year to do photographs um, of little time costumes. Um, but, um, you know, really, with, when it comes to that, everything is all about the props. Um, and it's all about the, the eat right down to the shoes. And the stockings, too. Yes, mm -hmm. shoes, stockings, underpinnings. Yeah. Um, the underwear is actually important. It's very, very yes. important, um, which I'll talk about that later on in the corset panel. I'll be able to go over what era corset you would use for the, for the particular regions of gowns. That, you know, if you have a specific region, this corset would be completely different than what you would wear with what she's got on because they come from different decades. So the different corsets did different things. A Regency era was actually kind of just kind of a little vest thing. It was very, very small. Um, and the one that, from the era that she's wearing was made out of steel and very painful <laughs> and large. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she's like, I can't wear steel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the ultimate expression of that would be in Kyrie when they had the panniers to hold the yes. dresses, yes. the court dresses. Mm -hmm. that's, um, that's from um, 18th century France. And they were made out of wicker. Yeah, little baskets. Mm -hmm. sort of they had little baskets in there and they would keep things like fans and candy and dogs. <laughs> and then occasional puppies. Occasional puppies. And, and actually the, the dresses are made um, so you could slide their hands in. The front part of the corset would show, but then the overdress itself was like a, a coat almost. And then they could slide their hands in there and get into their little baskets and pockets and things. So I had one made out of steel. It was heavy. <laughs> and I actually, it was so much work to go through and make this one. I dressed it up, I covered the whole thing in lace so it would be French, you know, um, French Revolutionary period. You know, made the proper corset and everything. And then I looked at the pattern for the dress, and that's like 22 and a half yards of fabric. And I was like, my, my director wants me to make this out of silk velvet, so that's $24 a yard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you going to buy me a new car? Because I could buy a new car for the amount of money it would cost me to make this dress. Maybe on eBay or Craigslist, but it, it might be cheap, but I could still, you know. It's a very expensive gown to make, the 18th century gowns. Um, um, <clears throat> and also, it would have been very hot. I had considered mounting a fan and, and, and fill a bag of operating fan. You do what you can to stay cool. I know a couple of people, I've, I've actually sewn pouches in their costumes for um, camel packs so that you can't see the camel pack, but they can keep cold water in them. Um, a way to keep cool um, whenever they're doing stuff. They have those. For guys that wear like the full stone trooper outfits, <laughs> so that you put in your freezer, and it's almost like an ice pack. Mm -hmm. you put it on. Yeah, it's the same stuff you put in your lunch boxes, but just mm -hmm. so they don't have to Yeah, I'm totally going to keep this on all day at Dragon Con. Let's see. How are well, you not passing it out? You've got the whole vest and, and the helmet. Built in AC yeah. units if they really want to go for it. Right. They can yes. make them. Yeah. Uh, you can find them on whiteharbor.net. <laughs> 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 so, is there any other question? Well, I, you know, I, I wanted to thank you all for coming, and I jammer on so much. Miss Linda, do you have anything else to say? No, no, no. Um, <clears throat> um, honestly, everything that I brought here, um, because I, I have such a hard time reading the books, 
my my fiber really inhibits my ability to maintain information. So I'll read three chapters and then the next day I'll go back and read the last chapter, the last thing that I read, and, and you know it takes a long time. I really struggle with that. Thankfully, I have have it on now. I can listen um, to the books, but. Um, Honestly, everything that I have put out at this point has come from her direction. Um, and she's the foremost, as far as I can tell, is detailed. It's, it's incredible. The, I guess, um, with ideas, I do want to say one thing. The, the, the actual portraits, they've got their accessories. So if you want right. ideas of what accessories you could do that would sort of fit in with your costume, the paintings will show that mm -hmm. from that era. Exactly, and that's that's what I loved about it is that you you provided photographs of you know okay here is the region you know if your character is from this region this is the style of costume that this character would wear and here's some photos of what this would look like um, and you know I'm going to be in this other room in here and I'll be sitting at a table but I have nothing to sell um, so if anybody wants to come and talk to me. Um, and you have a particular period piece that you're looking for, I can give me a description and I will draw out a sketch for you and see if this is what, you know, is this what you envision? It's basically what I did with Grace. Okay, Grace, you know, tell me what you want and let's see what we can put together. Um, so that that's what I'll be doing until one o'clock at the course of panel. Um, and, um, but I mean, honestly, everything that, that I've seen that I've been able to take has come, most of the details of what I've been able to do has come from her, all of the hard work that Linda did on her 13th Depository website, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal website. It's been a great resource. You want to know the address? Yes, come get her cards because really, and, 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 and now class, next year Jennifer expects to see someone from every region, okay? I want I want to see some kimonos out there. Um, you know, next year our theme is is uh, Kara Khan, mm -hmm. so maybe a yule costumes. Yes, we we would very much like to see. You know, hey, come on, guys. That's funny. Let's I love the dumb hunt. I can't stay away from so. It took me a moment. Yeah. <laughs> you you know what? If, if you know what your body type is and you know what fits you best, then then that's what you work with. If you don't know what what fits your body type best, mm -hmm. talk to talk to me. Mm -hmm. okay. I can say, okay, this it's one is really good for someone who has this shape. Okay, so I will be in there, and thank you, Miss Linda, because I would not be here right now if it weren't for this. I would be, but Jennifer would be going, you suck, and I don't want to talk to you. I wouldn't do that. I'd be like, oh, that's beautiful, but it's not really real time. Right. Right. So, yeah, no one even recognized these. That's the yeah, really? That was a, well, I, I had it. I, right I, I read it. I read it. I scanned through this one, but I was really working on details in this one. And then I got into this one. I was going, Oh my God! I could have done that. Oh, what was I thinking? Oh. It took me. It took me a while to find the second. The second section. Oh, yes. Um, but y'all come up and take a look at the costumes. Please no. take a look at the costumes. Oh. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Oh.